Here I have an ellipse centered about the origin and we've established that the standard form of the equation of this ellipse is x squared on a squared plus y squared on b squared is equal to 1. In this video let's explore all of the features of the ellipse and determine some relationships for these features before we go on to worked example problems. Firstly let's determine the x-intercepts. So these are the points where the ellipse crosses the x-axis which of course occur when y is equal to 0. So from the equation of the ellipse we have x squared on a squared plus 0 squared on b squared is equal to just x squared on a squared which equals 1 and this implies that x squared is equal to a squared which means that x is equal to positive or negative of the square root of a squared which equals positive and negative a. So therefore the x-intercepts are negative a 0 and a comma 0. So here we have the x-intercept a comma 0 and here we have the x-intercept negative a comma 0. Now in relation to the origin which is 0 0 the distance from the center to the x-intercepts which is the length a is the furthest we will ever get from the center. And we call this the semi-major axis. Semi meaning half and major meaning it is the bigger of the two axes. Secondly, let's determine the y-intercepts. And these occur at x equals 0. So again with the equation of the ellipse we have 0 squared on a squared plus y squared on b squared is equal to 1 and this implies that y squared is equal to b squared which implies that y is equal to plus or minus b so therefore the y-intercepts are located at coordinates 0 b and 0 negative b so here we have 0 b and here we have 0 negative b and once again the distance from the origin to the y-intercepts is the length b we call this the semi-minor axis alright we've also established that the ellipse has two focal points so we have the focal point f and we have the focal point f prime that's mirrored about the y-axis and because we have two focal points we must also have two directrices or directrices and I'll label this as d and d prime so the next things to do are to work out the coordinates of the foci and the equations of the directrices Alright, we have a clean slate, so let's find the coordinates of the foci. At the beginning we gave the foci arbitrary coordinates of c comma 0 and negative c comma 0, but we know that at any point on the ellipse, so at p of x, y, the distance from point p to the focus over the perpendicular distance from the point P to the directrix is equal to the eccentricity. In this case we have an eccentricity that has the values between 0 and 1. Now if we set this point P so that it's on the x-axis, let's call this point Px and we know that Px because it is an x-intercept has the coordinates a comma 0 so the distance from Px to the focus is simply A minus C. So the length A 
minus a length C. And for the directrix that is located to the right of the ellipse, let's say that it has the equation x equals d. So the distance from px to d is equal to the distance d minus the distance a. So we have the relationship a minus c on D minus A is equal to the eccentricity. Now similarly, if we move this point P all the way to the other x-intercept, let's call this one P prime x, and if we look at this distance P prime x to the focus, well this distance is A plus C, and now if we look at the distance from P prime X to the right hand side directrix, this distance is equal to A plus D. So we have the relationship A plus C on A plus D is equal to the eccentricity. Let's call this equation one and let's call this equation 2. If I take equation 1, a minus c on d minus a equals e, I can rearrange it so that we have a minus c is equal to e times d minus a. And if I expand the e into the d minus a, I get ed minus ea. And I can do the same thing to equation 2. So a plus C on A plus D equaling E can be rearranged to A plus C equals E by A plus D which equals E times A plus E times D. Let's call this equation 3. Let's call this equation 4. And what I can do now is subtract equation 3 from equation 4. So equation 4 we have a plus c equals ea plus ed minus all of equation 3 which is a minus c equals minus ea plus ed. So on the left hand side we have a minus a which equals 0, c minus negative c which equals 2c and on the right hand side we have ea minus negative ea which is 2ea and ed minus ed equals 0. So therefore 2c equals 2ea which means that c equals ea. So the right hand side focus which we said was located at c comma 0 we can say the coordinates are the eccentricity times the length of the semi-major axis, comma zero. And similarly, for the left-hand side focus, we can say that it is negative of the eccentricity times the length of the semi-major axis, comma zero. Okay, so this was point three, not point four. Point four, let's finally work out the equations of the directrices. So from the above, instead of subtracting equation three from equation four, let's add equation three to re equation four. So we've a plus c equals ea plus ed plus all of a minus c equals negative ea plus ED. So A plus A gives 2A, C minus C gives 0, EA plus negative EA is 0, and ED plus ED is 2ED. So we have 2A equals 2ED. The 2's cancel. And if we divide both sides of this by E, we can write D equals A on E. So the equation of the right-hand side directrix, x equals d, is really x 
equals the semi-major axis on the eccentricity and the equation of the left hand side directrix which is x equals negative d is really x equals negative of the semi-major axis length on the eccentricity. Now one more point to note is that the length from the point P to the nearest focus, so this is PF, plus the distance from point P to its far focus, PF prime, PF plus PF prime is always equal to twice of the semi-major axis length. And the length 2a, which is the x-intercept to x-intercept, is called the major axis. The length 2b, which is y-intercept to y-intercept, we call the minor axis. Okay, that shall do it for this video on features of the ellipse. If you have found this video helpful in helping you better understand how an ellipse is constructed, please give me a thumbs up. And please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more videos that may help you with your assignments and homework. Please share this video with your friends and please don't hesitate to ask me any questions by using the comments below. Till next time, best of luck.